And according is about to start. Yep, you are recording and it should show up. Yeah, good. And I head over to share my screen. And this should in theory work and the attendance should be open in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Should be open now. Is there a test coming up? Yes, indeed, there is a test coming up. And I think I will probably, it will be before the end of term. I have not yet decided exactly how I'm going to do this test. I've written the test, uh, but I haven't decided exactly how it works. It will be uh, a few questions. It's not multiple choice. It's not multiple choice. It's different. Because you know that I like to do things differently. Because um, with multiple choice, you just simply guess. And next term, we will thank you very much, Conrad, for the for the Moodle link. And next term, we will I'll actually do some calculations where I will prove to you that uh, if you do a conventional multiple choice test, you get away with far more than people usually believe they get away with. Uh, but the test that you are going to do in week, I think it is, will, will be week 12-ish, um, will be different. So be excited. Be excited. And I can already tell you, if you get less than 100% in this test, then something went wrong. Week 12 is the week before Christmas. Oh, absolutely. It will be uh, all online, but you have to do a little bit of work for that. And of course, you can do it as open book if you really want to. And I think the way I'm going to do it is. Oh, let me think. What is stressing you the most about all these uh, tests and assessments? What stresses you most? Or are you not stressed about tests anymore? The clock. Uh -huh. that I'm not good at them. Well, by the end of your degree, you will be the masters of test takers. Level of detail and answers. Ah, oh, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Given enough time, but under time pressure, I melt. How about the following? If I give you a week for doing the test, how would that sit with you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Be always worried. No, don't worry. Oh, I will prepare a checklist for you guys.
No. Don't worry. <laughs> ah, well, Conrad, there is a twist to it, as you might expect with me. There is a twist to it. And yes, there will be a test around week 12, and I probably will give you a week to do that test. <laughs> yep, Hassan, you sussed me out. Yes, indeed, it does include Biomed Eng students. Yeah, there is the there is the uh, program level multiple choice next week. Um, the test uh, for BI three or eight is probably not on your timetable because it I don't like it to be uh, stressful and uh, basically assessing you under pressure. I don't believe in that. So, but you will get instructions, so don't you worry. Efi, I see what I can do. It's on Tuesday, yes, I saw it or or on week twelve. yeah, it, uh, yeah, well, let's be let's be a little bit more flexible with things if we can. So don't panic, okay? Panic is always uh, a bad thing. Right, shall we get started? Because we've got some interesting stuff to do today. And it's about buffers and what you can do with buffers. And it probably will also occupy us for the best part of next week. No, it's not the last day of the term. The last day of the term is the 18th. That's the Friday. Sorry to uh, be horrible to you. It was not my, my decision. So yesterday and on uh, Wednesday, we discussed um, pH and acids and bases. And I told you that the pH is defined as negative logarithm of the proton concentration in a solution. And likewise, the pOH is defined as the negative logarithm of the hydroxide ion concentration in a solution. And I also told you that in uh, aqueous solutions, we have pH plus pOH always adds up to 14. And that is because of the iron product of the water. So I also showed you that for a strong acid, so a strong acid, and usually for a strong acid, we have no pKa given. And pKa is the logarithm of the dissociation constant. So for a strong acid, we can usually say the pH equals the negative logarithm, all to the base of 10, by the way, all to the base of 10. And it's always, the concentrations are always in molar. So pH for a strong acid is usually the concentration of the acid that we have. Uh, if the acid totally dissociate, dissociates, and if we've got a diluted acid, if acid is diluted, 
Then we have to take the protons of the water into account. So in this case, we would get pH equals negative log of, and I make a large bracket, the acid concentration plus the protons from the water. And we know that this is one times 10 to the minus seven. Because that then uh, helps us to avoid that we get a pH larger than seven if we have a very diluted acid. So that's for a strong acid. We also discussed the weak acid. We did that yesterday. And for a weak acid, I showed you the equation and we derived this equation. And I want to point out, you don't need to know how you get to this equation, but you do need to know what the equation is. pH equals one half of pKa minus logarithm of the acid concentration. Please note, this is in brackets, so you really need to calculate this bit first and then divide it by two. So that's very important. And the half, why do we half it? That was because it was originally a quadratic equation where we had x to the power of two. And we derived that uh, yesterday. So the recording is up. Uh, please have a look uh, at it. And we have the uh, business rules uh, in this case. Absolutely right. So this is for the weak acid. And we said the pKa. The pKa is basically the negative logarithm again to the base of 10 of the Ka value. And we said the Ka value is given when we have the reaction HA, this is our acid, dissociates into H plus, that's the protons, plus A minus, that is the conjugate base. So we can write the equation for that. We can write H plus times A minus divided by HA, by the acid. So basically what is on the left, on the right hand side is up here multiplied and what is on the left hand side is in the denominator and that is our Ka. That is the dissociation constant. Dissociation constant of the acid. Of acid. And this is basically where we finished yesterday. Um, so we, uh, we did that yesterday. And what I want to do with you today is sort of expand a little bit on that. And especially I want to expand on this equation here. I want to expand on this equation because um, we can do something quite uh, funny with it. Although you probably won't uh, find uh, it uh, hilarious. Let's write this down again. Ka, actually I want to write this equation in a slightly different format. Ka equals H plus times a minus divided by, so that's the 
base divided by HA. So that here is the base concentration and that here is the acid concentration. Okay. <laughs> yes. Both funny. Okay. So I just uh, isolated the protons here. And what I'm going to do now is, mm, what can we do with that? Oh, I tell you what we do. We take both sides log of it, log to the base of 10 of this equation. So we get log Ka equals log of proton concentration times A minus concentration divided by the acid concentration. So we've taken both sides log. And according to the rules of logarithm, we can also split that. We can write this as log H plus plus this multiplication where becomes a plus log of the base, that's the A minus divided by the acid. And I put a bracket around that to make sure that is, we, we need to take the log of this ratio. Why are we doing that? Because we can. Just stay with me, Imogen. Because there will be something really cool. So we have this equation and mathematically this is not terribly exciting. Now, and because we can, let's say we multiply both sides by minus one. And if you watched the lecture yesterday, this procedure probably looks familiar to you. So what do we get? We get negative log Ka equals negative log H plus plus minus, and we can write minus, minus log A minus over the acid. And again, I put this bracket around that. Okay, are you happy with it? Have I made a mistake anywhere? I don't think so. So now let's simplify. Let's do something with that. What is negative log Ka? How can I write this? Jamie, you're absolutely right. This is pKa. That was our pKa. Look, we've defined it here. pKa equals, what can I write negative log H plus as? Yes, this is the pH. So pKa equals pH minus, and that I can't really convert, I just write it as base over acid. And of course, it's the concentrations. So what I can do now is I can actually 
bring this bit to the other side and I have pKa plus log base over acid equals pH. Or I can write it also as pH equals, uh, let's write it different forms, pKa, I want to p, pH on the other side. pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. Or what I can also do is we know that according to the rules of logarithm, log B over A is exactly the same thing as negative log A over B. That's the rules of logarithm. So I can also write this as pH equals pKa minus log acid over base. These two things, this one here and this one here, are absolutely identical. It's just, a, you know, the, the sign here is different. Here is a plus, but therefore we've got a base here, or you can write it as negative with the acid on top. Does that make sense? Doesn't really look too challenging, the whole thing. We just uh, played a little bit around with it. And we got actually two equations. Well, if you, if you think about it, it's really only one equation that we have in two different forms. And I know that it likes the, the green color, so I do the green color. Actually, no, you don't need to remember both equations. If you remember just one equation, then, and with the rules of logarithm, you can easily then figure out the other one, but it doesn't really matter because both equations give you exactly the same result. Um, I personally, because I learned this equation, I learned it this with the minus, pH equals pKa minus log acid over base. I learned it that way. But I know that some other people learned it the other way around with the plus. And it really doesn't matter. You can use both equations equally well. They are not mutually exclusive. Some people prefer this one here. Let me show you this one. Some people prefer this one here because they can remember it as Klapper is a positive, is a positive bastard. A positive bastard. So they remember what's on top. As I said, I usually use the negative acid. And <clears throat> this actually, this equation, you will be delighted to hear, actually has a name. Does anyone know what this equation is called? No, 
I would be delighted if it was called that. It's not the weak acid equation. You have one more guess. Make it count. If you ever have to look it up, you look it up as the famous Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Have you, has anyone heard about Henderson Hasselbalch? Some people have, others haven't. This is the famous Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And what it actually does, it gives a relationship, relationship between pH, the pKa, and the ratio of acid and base. Of acid and base. That is what this Henderson Hasselbalch equation does. So you could argue. Who cares? Who gives a flying flamingo about this Henderson Hasselbalch equation? Well, actually, without this Henderson Hasselbalch equation, that didn't exist. You would be dead within five minutes. And we are, let me, let me give you an example, and I know let me give you an example what this actually implies. And I come back to this question for strong or weak acids. And it has, for example, something to do with the blood pH or homeostasis. Absolutely right, Elias. So let's say we have HA dissociates into H plus plus A minus. And we assume that HA is a weak acid. So we are using weak acids for that. <laughs> 10 points to Slytherin, yes. Well, if you are in Slytherin house, 10 points to you. So let's see what we have. We have HA molecules. Let's put four HA molecules around. And these HA molecules in water are not dissociated, okay? They are not dissociated. They are not dissociated because it's a weak acid. And now let's just simply add. Oh, no. Let me just quickly get rid of that because I want to use a different color. I want to show that in different colors. Let's have we've got four HAs. Right. And we have also four A minus hanging around. Okay. So let's say we have a solution that has that is composed like that. And let's say our 
H A has a P K A of five. The dissociation constant. Now what we can do is we can check out what is the pH of this solution. And the way we can do that is we just simply use the henderson hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa. Do you want plus or negative? Positive or negative? Which one, which one do you prefer? I don't mind. Positive, negative, focus, positive, plus. Okay, let's do plus. So plus log over base divided by acid. Okay, so let's put in what we know. We have pH, that is what we are looking for, equals pKa, and I said the pKa, let's say that's 5, that indicates it's a weak acid, minus log of, okay, so base, we had four base per volume. And how much acid did we have? How much acid did we have? In our picture here? Yeah. We had four acid in the volume. Oops, has it gone? Four acid in the volume. So now the volume cancels out. The four cancels out, and all we've got left is pH equals pKa, that's the five, minus log of one. What is the log of one? Oh, sorry, plus. Thank you, five plus log one. Yep, you can do that as well. The more outrageous your memnonic is, and I should put here a plus here. Thank you for reminding me. That would be zero. So pH equals five plus zero, because that gives one. Absolutely right. Excellent. So when the base to acid ratio is 1, the pH is the same as the pKa, because our log here turns 0. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Seven, eight, nine, and one A minus. Can we calculate the pH of that? Yeah, absolutely, you can. Why not? You just use that not you not as individual molecules, but you can, for example, just simply say, I've got 
10 mole of acid and 10 mole of base in there. So can we calculate the pH of this guy? So, no. pH, let's do it now with the negative, equals pKa minus log of the acid, because we've done the positive before, divided by base. So, pKa is 5 minus log. Tell you what, we add one more, then it's easier to calculate. We have 10 acid and one base. No, I wouldn't give you that as a drawing. Now, Kenneth, you were right. Sorry that I changed it. No, you were not right. Equals five minus, what is log 10 over one? That gives us one. So the pH would be four. And Ella, you're absolutely right. The pH would be four, right? So in this case, pH is four. How many molecules do we actually have that have an A in it? Eleven. Excellent. So how did you do that? We just simply counted the A H A plus A minus, and you got eleven for that. Absolutely right. This is actually if we do it with the concentrations, H A plus A minus, this is called the capacity. And the whole thing that you see here, this one here, or this one here, is called, ooh, wow. Did that come from? This is called a buffer. Why on earth is it called a buffer? Okay, let's go back to our example with the four and four. So we have HA. H A, H A, and H A. And we have some blue ones. A minus, A minus, A minus, and A minus. And they are all in a volume. Okay, so what's the capacity of this buffer? How many A's? Absolutely right. We've got eight A's. That's the capacity of the buffer. Now, 
I add one rogue H plus and I draw that in a different color. What is going to happen? What will happen with this green H plus? Have a guess. If we add it, yes. Ah, yeah, absolutely right it will combine with the HA. So what have we got? We have HA, 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 our still our four HAs. We have three blue and we have one that has absorbed the HA, but it's now an HA. So what has changed? How many HAs do we have now? Right, we have five HAs and how many bases? How many A minus? Absolutely right. Now, how has the pH actually changed? We produce more HA, but HA is actually a weak acid, as we said, because it doesn't dissociate. So what is the pH? pH in this case here was pH equals pKa minus, and I do it with the acid on top, four over four. So if we have a pKa of five, then pH equals five minus zero. In this case, we have pH equals pKa minus log five over three equals five minus, and let's calculate that. We calculate five divided by three, and we take the log of that. 0 0.22. So we have five minus 0 0.22, which gives us 4.78. Right? Yep. Where did the other A minus go? Well, the A minus that absorbed the H plus. Yeah. So our buffer changed from five, five to four point seven eight. Not a dramatic change. If we just had simply added our H plus to the solution, this would have had a massive effect on the pH. The pH would have gone dramatically down if it was just in, in water like that here, 
pH would have been massively gone down, like, you know, when you add hydrochloric acid to water, pH goes down. But if you've got a buffer, like here, with a buffer, the buffer stopped the pH from going down dramatically. It will go down to a certain extent, but not very dramatically. Right? And that is exactly what a buffer does. A buffer resists a change in pH. So buffers resist buffers resist change in pH. Now, of course, we could do also the same thing the other way around. We could have HA, 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 HA. And we have A minus, A minus, A minus, A minus. And now what we do is we add an OH minus. What's going to happen? If we add an OH minus, we convert one of the HAs plus OH minus, we convert that into what? It will dissociate, exactly. It will dissociate into water plus an A minus. Absolutely right, Luke. So what do we get? We removed one of the HAs. And instead, we converted that into a new A minus. So here, our calculation would be pH equals pKa minus log, I only have three over five. Now, so here it would be pH equals five. I don't even need to calculate that because this gives me plus 0 0.22. So here the pH goes to 5.22. So from what we had here, pH five, it only goes to 5.22. So it goes a little bit up, it becomes a little bit more basic and alkaline if we add OH minus. If we add OH minus to plain water, the pH would shoot up dramatically. Does that make sense? Are you happy with this explanation? So Luke says yes, and John says yes, so or it sounds like good. So how can we make this buffer? Well, all we need to do is we just simply mix a weak acid with 
it's conjugate space. Oops, I disappeared. Where am I? Yeah, am I? Am I back? Yeah. We mix a weak acid with its conjugate base. So, for example, we would mix acetic acid with acetate ions. So, for example, sodium acetate. We make this mixture, and that gives us a buffer. The buffer, of course, works best We change to five bases and four and three acids. It's three acids because we converted one of the acid into a base. And the sum is always eight. A buffer works best when the concentration of acid is pretty close to the concentration of the base. Or we get then in this case, if this is the if this is the case, we get pH equals pKa, let's say plus log base over acid. This one would be zero. So in this case, we have pH equals pKa. When we have the same concentrations of acid and base, then the buffer is quite effective. On the other hand, we could, depending on what we mix together, what kind of concoction we produce, we can have, for example, let's have HA, 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 HA for, and we do just one A minus. We can calculate the PK, the pH for that pH equals 5 minus, what do I have? Log 4 over 1 in this case. Yeah, so I could calculate the pK, the, the pH. What would happen if I add, if I'm really mean now, if I add H plus and another H plus. What do I get with that? How many HAs do I get? HAs. How many HAs do I get? Ella, you're absolutely right. I get one, two, three, four, five, because this one combines. I get five HAs. How many A's have I got left? I've got zero A's. And what else have I got left? I've got an H plus left. 
In this case, the buffer doesn't work properly because it has not protected us from the effects. It sort of cushioned at least one of the protons, but the other proton is still there. It does not need to have, that's a very good question, James. It does not need to have exactly the same ratio of acid and base. It usually works best when the acid base ratio is similar, but we could, depending on what pH we want to have, we could make a buffer very easily by just trying to figure out how much of the base and how much of the acid do we need to mix together. And this is actually, this is actually what we are going to do next week. We are going to calculate the amounts of a base and an acid so that we get a particular pH. And I show you how you can do that. So I've been asked what are common buffers and uh, in the body, the most common buffers are actually H2CO3 versus the HCO3 minus buffer, that's the carbonate buffer or bicarbonate buffer. which buffers at pH around 7.2 or something like that. We also have a phosphate buffer. And again, so that's the phosphate buffer in the body. And again, that is around pH 7.2. And we also have proteins that can act as buffers. And how this works, I'm going to show you next week. So for today, I've showed you the henderson hasselbalch equation. I've derived this henderson hasselbalch equation, but you don't need to know that the, uh, the, how you get to it. Um, and uh, I showed you I, we discussed the capacity of the buffer. If you go beyond the capacity of the buffer, you basically kill the buffer. The buffer doesn't work anymore. Uh, and yet, um, if you are in the range where the base and the acid concentrations are fairly similar, then you have got a really good buffer system where the buffer will resist any dramatic changes in pH. And I tell you, we are going to have a practical about it where you really will explore that in a practical in week 13, straight after the Christmas break. So I leave it there. I'm going to produce uh, some resources, which I will put up on Moodle and also uh, make an announcement uh, about calculations with buffers, because that is a really important thing and it will hit you in your second and in your final year and in exams, how you calculate buffers. But we will discuss that in more detail uh, next week in the Thursday session. So with uh, any further ado, my time is up. I wish you all have uh, to have a very, very good weekend. Be good. Don't do anything I wouldn't do and um, have fun. Enjoy life. Take care and enjoy your afternoon nap. Bye-bye.